Added motion blur in Premiere Pro may be a pain in the no! Whether you're trying to get smooth time lapses and speed ramps or make smoother animations or simply fix the high shutter speed effect from your camera by adding a little bit of motion blur that makes your footage so better and way more cinematic. So I combined all five best ways that are available right now in Premiere Pro on how you can add motion blur to your videos. Hey, what's up? My name is Arthur Weiner and now it's not wine, it's just a cherry juice. Why, you might ask? Because my Russian surname translates as a cherry and I don't drink alcohol, so... <sighs> let's get started. All right, let's start with frame blending. And this one is huge. I actually didn't know about it, but then I found a tutorial by Chris Howe and I'm like, what? Let me show it to you. Let's say you have a time-lapse or hyperlapse video. In my case, I have this fly through the tunnel footage. The camera is moving too slow, so I'm gonna right-click, speed duration, and change the speed up to like 1500%. We could use this option, but I don't like the feel of it. I don't feel that we're flying through the tunnel at high speed. So I'm gonna return to speed duration settings. And by default, down here, you can see frame sampling turned on. But in this case, we're gonna select frame blending. Click on OK and boom, this is actually that simple. If you don't see the results, immediately select in and out points by clicking I and O on your keyboard. And press or smash, if you will, enter. Or you should go to sequence and select render effects in to out. Let's see how it looks without frame blending applied and with frame blending. Frame blending applied, okay. <laughs> Let's try the same technique, but with a more common time-lapse. Here we have people walking on the main street of St. Petersburg. As before, we're going to increase the clip speed up to like 2000%. Select frame blending and press enter to render the whole thing. And now we have this beautiful motion blur applied to our footage. A little tip for you guys, if you have shaky footage after speeding it up, you can apply warp stabilizer effect on it. However, Premiere Pro wouldn't let you do this because you already have the effect applied. So right click the clip, select nest, let's call it motion time lapse. And now you can drop your stabilizer effect on it and decrease smoothness to about 5%. Just enough to eliminate this small shakiness. Let's see how it looks. But the downside of this technique is that you can't control the amount of blur applied to your footage. Sometimes we are okay with that, but sometimes we need this extra flexibility. And that brings us to the next method, which is transform effect. Let's say you have some sort of a graphical element in your shot animated using keyframes. It could be anything like animated text, fast transition, or simply zoom in or zoom out. For example, I wanna zoom into this engine here. Instead of creating keyframes using the motion effect, go to effects library and search for transform effect. Drag it onto your clip, and I'm going to add keyframes for position and scale. Then I'm gonna move forward a few frames and change scale and position to my liking. In fact, now you have some extra controls over skew, skew axis, opacity in this one panel. But we're looking for shutter angle. And crank this up up to basically any value you need. The higher the value, the stronger the motion blur you're gonna see. In general, I like to keep this amount around 250. Also keep in mind that you will also see a large amount of motion blur if you have fast animation. But if you move these keyframes away from each other, you're gonna see almost a noticeable amount of motion blur. Just keep that in mind. Now we have a lot smoother and more realistic animation in general. And you can do the same thing with text animation or if you want to add a motion blur to a PNG image, you can also do this technique. But unfortunately, the transform effect works only with graphical elements. You can just throw it onto your time lapse and do the same thing as we did with frame blending. So it brings us to the third way, which is directional blur. But let's have a little break, shall we? This one is very flexible, but limited to X and Y movements, when you have your camera moving from left to right, from top to bottom, or vice versa. And it works perfectly just so well with speed ramps. And if you don't know what the speed ramp is, enjoy a real quick tutorial from a cherry. What am I even talking about? Here's the shot with people walking, camera is moving from left to right, but it's a very long movement, so I wanna speed this up somewhere in the middle. So I right-click the clip, show clip keyframes, 
time remapping and select speed. So now you have this line in the middle. Hold the control key and left click the line when you want the speed to start changing. Move forward to where you want to go back to your normal speed and control click here. Spread these marks away from each other, smooth them out a little bit and move this central line up to about 400% in my case. And now you have your speed ramp effect. We need to nest this clip to another sequence for the directional blur to work correctly with this clip. So right click, select nest, give it a name and drag the directional blur effect to the nested clip. And we have two parameters here, direction of the blur and blur length. Increase the blur length not too high and I change direction to 90 degree or something close to it because the camera moves from left to right. Find the moment when it starts speeding up, add keyframe on blur length, leave it at zero, move forward a few frames and change blur length to something around 15. When the video is going back to normal speed, do the same thing here and ease those keyframes so we have a smoother transition. And here you go! If you want to go even further, you can download the third-party plugin called Real Smart Motion Blur or RSMB. It's not a free plugin, it will cost you $109 for the basic version and $169 for the pro version. They have a free trial but with a giant watermark. Anyway, let's grab the same time-lapse we used before and search for RSMB. It basically does the same thing as frame blending, however, you have controls over blur amount and motion sensitivity, which you can't control with frame blending. Just be happy with the result that Adobe offers you. And in general, the result with RSMB looks much better than frame blending. You can definitely see the separations on the fast movement. And sometimes you don't have any other option rather than shoot outside without your ND filter. So you have to boost your shutter speed up. Let's grab the same shot with people walking and as you can see, shutter speed is pretty high here. And really the only best way to add motion blur to moving objects in Premiere Pro is using the RSMB plugin. See if you add frame blending, you will get very weird results. But it's different with RSMB. Having motion sensitivity set on 70 and blur amount to 1, you can see this small portion of motion blur added just enough to make the footage more cinematic. Of course, I would recommend fixing this problem in camera, however, if you don't have any other options, you can use RSMB. But if you want to have the same flexibility but don't want to spend extra money, you will need the help of Adobe After Effects. Right click the clip and select Replace with After Effects composition. Here you have two options. Pixel CC Force Motion Blur and Pixel Motion Blur. They are very similar, however, I suggest using Pixel Motion Blur because I made more high quality results using this one. Shutter Angle controls how long you want your motion blur to be, Shutter Samples controls the quality of your motion blur, and Vector Details is self-explanatory. Now go back to Premiere Pro and you'll see your effects updated automatically. So here you go, 5 best and probably the only ways to add motion blur to your footage in Premiere Pro. If you enjoyed this video, hit a like button and subscribe, it means a lot to me because it's a new channel. Anyway, I hope you'll enjoy my content and I see you guys in the next video. Hey, what's up, my name is... Let's fix this. That's better.